<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kriana Illumin, and I'm here to talk with you today, today about Tantra Kabbalah. And we have Aria here as well, who is apprenticing to um, teach Tantra Kabbalah, and she'll be chiming in as we go along. So the first thing I'd like to do is just introduce ourselves to you. Um, as I said, my name is Kriana, and my lineages are Western Hermetic mysticism and uh, basically neo-Western Tantra that I have reclaimed um, into a, an organic, spontaneous, which is um, part of the red left-hand path of Tantra um, practice. And the tantric aspect of what I hold has been something through uh, life and self-discovery and um, experiences and applying the teachings that I've learned from multiple different teachers and that I've read and then uh, worked with thousands of people helping them to wake up their kundalini energy over, um, let's see, the last 13 years. And the Western Hermetic lineage is something that was taught to me through a mystery school and where I received multiple initiations and I actually learned them simultaneously. So the first Tantra teachers that I had actually were the people that introduced me to the mystery school that I ended up going to and learning all of the magical practices. So that was um, very auspicious because over many years and a lot of experiences, it eventually wove together and became um, Tantra Kabbalah as part of what we offer. Um, those two different um, more masculine energy and feminine energy woven together to create a really potent and powerful experience. Um, yeah, my journey has been really long and really wonderful and really intense. I started out in life with a very broken and dysfunctional and um, abusive experiences that I had as a child that I had to um, transmute and overcome that caused me to feel really depressed and suicidal at times in my life. And the reason that I love sharing these teachings so much is because they helped me save my life. And um, I want to help as many people feel as wonderful as possible so that we can co-create a really amazing, wonderful experience here on earth together. So that's all I'll say for now. And you'll get to know me more, um, I hope, as throughout this presentation. And then hopefully I'll get to meet you in person as well. Um, Aria, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Aria. And um, I am, as Kriana said, apprenticing in the Tantra Kabbalah um, uh, lineage with her. Um, I began my study, my initial um, um, exposure to uh, like the Tree of Life and um, and Tantra and just like even those words was through uh, an author that I listened to several years ago. And then it just, and through um, becoming sober um, and growing out of and having lived through significant traumas and abuses as a child and as a young adult. And so I was seeking, to, <laughs> seeking, seeking, seeking um, how to integrate all those energies within my body. and. About four and a half years ago, Kriana and I met, and um, I knew that I had found home. I knew that I had found the teaching that was appropriate for me and has helped me so much in my personal growth and healing so, uh, some, not just my personal traumas, but family traumas and, and ancestral traumas. Um, and... Um, I love the way that we weave together the masculine and the feminine and not just, and along with the masculine and the feminine, the Tantra is very feeling and very embodying um, as in my experience. And then the Kabbalah is very mind 
juicy, like something for your mind to chew on. So the combination of the two was perfect for me because I needed both of those aspects in order to heal my entire being. So I am, I'm exceedingly grateful to be uh, a part of this talk and a part of the upcoming classes. And um, it's wonderful to be here and welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Aria. And um, just to let you know, Torin Collective is an organization that we run out of Portland, Oregon and beyond. And Aria and I are part of this organization. Um, and Maka, my husband, we're the three main teachers. And then we have a whole team of really amazing people that help us make everything happen. And um, yeah, it's a metaphysical school. So we offer Tantra Kabbalah as well as a dynamic form of meditation that uh, is called ecstatic awakening meditation, which is interwoven in the Tantric Kabbalah journey and practice. And uh, we also offer other um, Tantric trainings focusing on um, honoring and worshiping the divine feminine and the divine masculine. We um, have song and music and sound healing circles, which are just fun events that we offer the community and all kinds of things, whatever we feel inspired to do um, from month to month. So uh, this program, Tantra Kabbalah, is our longest most intensive program. It's nine months long, which is the incub incubation period for a human to be born or reborn in this case. And um, I've been teaching it now for five years. This will be, yeah, this July um, will be six years. And so it's been developing as um, a program for that long. Although, as I said, I've been developing the teaching with the teachings and working one-on-one -on -one with people since 2005. And um, anything else about Touring Collective or the other offerings, Aria, that you want to add? Yes, no? No, it sounds like you covered all of it. And that... Um that uh, also that Maka is going to be doing a, a rainbow light body workshop coming up soon, which is one of our newer offerings. And that's, we're really excited about that. Yes. There's, um, if you find us on YouTube, Touring Collective on YouTube, you can um, get access to the recording that he created on the rainbow light body and other recordings that we've made. Some of them are just fun us singing songs and that kind of thing too. We like to have fun. Um, all right, so let's begin with a grounding meditation. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and sit up with a straight spine and take some nice, deep, full breaths in through your nose and out your mouth. As you inhale, allow your lower belly to naturally expand and contract as you exhale. You're breathing into your belly and your lower back. And this just sends the message to your whole body that everything is okay. If you get nothing else out of this talk, just remembering to take these deep, full breaths can be absolutely life-changing. Ah, allowing anything that you might be holding from earlier today before you watch this video to dissolve as you're breathing. Allowing any thoughts of what you have to do next to dissolve. It will still be there when you're done with this video. Ah, allowing yourself to be completely present right here in this moment with what is about to be shared with you. <sighs> Feel yourself in your body. Notice where you're sitting and where your body touches the ground. Ground may be chair or cushion, doesn't matter. It's all part of the earth beneath you. Ah, 
feeling into your hips. Maybe just rock back and forth a little. Letting your hips relax. And feeling your middle back and your solar plexus. Letting those spots relax. Feeling into your heart, the front and the back. Letting your heart relax and become at ease in the front and between your, your shoulder blades. <sighs> Letting your shoulders relax, maybe give a little shimmy. Shake off some of those, some of that weight that you carry every day, responsibility. Still breathing into your lower belly. <sighs> Stretching your neck out, rolling your head gently from side to side. Hmm. Ah, letting your mind relax. If you're feeling any tension in your brow or in your eyes. Ah, breathe into that place and just let go. Allow your mind to be open so that you can receive this information from the beginner's mind. If your mind is full, there's no new information that you can receive. So allowing your mind, even just a little bit, to be emptier and open so that new information can come in. Still breathing into your lower belly. Take a nice full breath right into your very center. And exhale, sending that breath down and out the bottom of your body into the earth. Imagine roots everywhere, going in every direction below you, firmly anchoring you and planting you into the soil of the earth. Feel the support of the nutrients and sustenance, the connection and the tools, everything that you have the blessing of interacting with in this life in a physical body has come to you to support you. Feeling that support underneath you that you're sitting on it as your foundation and that it is solid beneath you. And those roots can absorb everything that you need up into the trunk of your body. <sighs> and now see a beautiful crown upon your head that may be made of branches reaching up towards the sky, towards the sun and the rain and the wind. <sighs> and those leaves and branches are acting as a perfect filter, allowing everything that you want to come in and everything that you don't want to stay out. And you are the perfect balance of these energies, this perfect divine wisdom and truth that's coming in from the cosmos, which you can trust completely. And this wonderful nourishment coming up from below, supporting you, providing you with all of the tools and everything you need to take the action that you desire in your life. So you have this open mind, but you also have this connection to yourself and to the energies above and below so that you have the most wonderful discernment that is working perfectly for you. And coupled with the hope of new inspiration and new ideas coming in, 
mm, that you are in the balance of this. You are held by this. And in fact, you're held by this right now, but you are held by this every moment of your life. All you have to do is tap in and remember. <sighs> Opening your eyes. That was the perfect lead in the end of that meditation to our talk because that is a lot of what we do um, in Tantra Kabbalah is learning how to tap in and remember, to remember who we are, where we came from, what we are, why we're here, where we're going. These are the questions that Kabbalah answers. <sighs> So as you noticed, I turned us into a tree, um, which Kabbalah, in Kabbalah, um, the symbol is called the tree of life. And I'm going to show that to you right now. Give me just a moment and I will pop this up in a second. What's going on? Hold on. All right, here we go. This image is known as the tree of life. And uh, Kabbalah means to receive. So what you're receiving is information through Kabbalah. And Kabbalah is a very masculine energy. This tree of life is the path that we follow on our Tantra Kabbalah journey. We begin here in the root chakra, also called Malkut, which means the kingdom, the kingdom of earth. And we follow it all the way up. We go right up the middle in Tantra Kabbalah, because as you might notice, many of us these days are familiar with the chakra system, which is uh, connected to the Tantric teachings and the tantric path, um, these spheres correlate perfectly with the chakras. So here's the root chakra, Muladhara, the sacral chakra, Svadhisthana, am I saying that right? I sometimes mix the sacral with the crown. I do as well. <laughs> 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 I am doing the right one. <laughs> and then here you see on the tree of life, there's two spheres that are split and they're flanking the solar plexus chakra, which would be right here. And these spheres uh, need to be in balance in order for the sacral the solar plexus chakra to be in balance. Then you have the heart chakra here, which is lovely. Um, just the correlations between Kabbalah and Tantra are magnificent. So as this is the heart, and you can see um, there's an outline of a body here. Here's the arms, shoulders, and then this sphere, the heart, sits right on the heart chakra, heart, tor heart torus, heart sephira. Sephira is the name that we use in Kabbalah. And all of the paths, this is the only sphere in the entire tree that all of the paths to every single sphere lead directly to the heart. So the heart really is the sphere that holds everything together. That's true in the chakra system as well. And then you have the throat torus here, which is a little off on this um, image. I would have placed it a little higher here, um, but they, ha they have it here in the high heart. Um, so on the shoulders sit these two spheres, Gebra and Hesed, which need to be in balance in order for the throat chakra to be in balance. I'm gonna go more into this later um, so that you'll understand a little more what I'm talking about. This one is, um, not a chakra, it's known as the hidden sphere, da'at, and we do not go into this sphere, we cross over it, which you can see on this tree. There's a line here going from this sphere to this one, 
but it's, it doesn't have edges like these other ones do have these black edges because this is a, this is a path, this is a bridge that we have to create together. And I'll, I'll talk more about that. And then uh, this one here is the third eye and then the crown. So um, in the, the tantric practice of what we're doing, which correlates to the chakras that I just showed you on the screen here, that is the experience of what we're having. We're invoking energies. We're turning them on with our intention, with ritual practices, with experiences that we have. And I'm going to be honest, each journey is really different. We have a huge toolbox of all different kinds of experiences that we can have for each of these spheres that, um, you know, there's a, there's a general um, energy that is true every single time but the experience is channeled and is um, sometimes even spontaneous because we're really listening to the needs of the group and what's coming through for the people that are sitting in the circle for the particular um, journey that we're on with that particular group so um, there are multiple students that have gone through the journey again and again and again and had um, a different experience each time and I can't even explain to you what a wonder it's been to watch people transmute their shit and peel the layers off and become more and more connected to their true divine being over um, several years. It's, it's been my deepest honor to witness that in students. And in myself, I love um, seeing that in myself and the students get to see that in us as teachers as well, because we are on this journey with you. We're not sending you on a journey and holding your hand. We are learning as well, right by your side. Um, do you want to add anything right now, Aria? I'm, I'm glad that you said that about the journey being, because it's very, What popped into my head is like organized religion is very broad and very huge and very scope and it can you know like you all do this because i said so don't ask questions kind of thing mm. this is not that this journey and every time i've been through it several times and every time i've been through it has been different because i have been different mm. even though the teachings and the principles are the same yeah. i am revealed more it's like i'm scrubbed off ooh, through the through the process and then i get to see more of myself and and people that i've gone through the journey with as well i to see the light inside them turn on is is miraculous and the reason that that works so well is because this journey is personal mm. it's your journey yeah. This is you and how you relate with these energies and, and, and us as well, because we, as, as Kriana said, we are going through this journey with you mm. and um, it is a living thing that can be with you for the, the, the entirety of your being and um, can reveal to you things that you didn't even know were lost within you and powers that you never even imagined were possible. And it's because it's such a personal journey that we, 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 we stay in the moment with you so that what's coming in and appropriate at that time is what's being received. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it is a very personal experience. And it's a community group experience at the same time because you're, um, you're having your own internal process that's very deep but also you're doing this in a group with other people and we are all holding the container together and um, it helps us to stay on track um, when we're doing this in a group doing something like this on your own completely possible and many people have done it um, but doing it in a group has its own um, special quality because your um, hope we have an accountability to show up 
because there are definitely moments along this tree, no matter how many times you've done it, where you might want to be like, I am done. I'm, I'm getting off this ride because it's going to bring up your stuff that is really um, making you stuck in your life. And I'm going to be honest, we live in a culture in which we are being given messages on the daily that are encouraging us to not look at those things that are holding us back, to just, you know, keep on doing what you've been doing, showing up for work, doing your duty, and not paying attention at all to your internal processes. And instead of really looking at yourself and doing that deep work, you know, going shopping or stuffing yourself with some comfort food or having a drink every day after work or, you know, smoking this or taking that pill or whatever, it's everywhere bombarding our senses and um, our psyches every day to avoid doing this work. And so when that stuff comes up, it can be very challenging and that's why we're here to assist you to help you remember to apply the tools and to hold you through that process and i promise you those people who have stuck with it and stayed the course and faced their deepest darkest fears and insecurities have the greatest rewards on the other side of that and the change that happens as a result of moving through that stuff is absolutely indescribable on some level because um, the liberation that is felt, the, um, the balance, the empowerment, the ability to feel grounded and um, secure and courageous in all the moments of your life like all of those little moments where you feel maybe anxiety or frustration or um, discouraged or any of these things that are recurring for you that are undesirable can be shifted and transmuted forever forever within you (laughs) And I mean that with every cell of my being because I have done it and I have helped others do it many, many times. Ah, So this is why we keep doing it because it's absolutely a phenomenal experience and it's worth it. It's worth the hard work, every moment of it. So some of the other ways that you receive support on this journey is, uh, so what it looks like is we have an initiation weekend where you receive specific teachings and rituals um, that you'll use throughout the entire journey that are meant to help you set your energy every single day. And um, these are thousands of years old practices that are handed down to you. And also by initiation with a sword, which We don't have a lot of initiations in our culture these days. And so having an initiation like this can be a truly amazing experience in and of itself. And in fact, people are invited to come just to initiation and to um, experience that. And if that's enough for you, then so be it. And you don't have to do the entire journey. And you can decide by the end of, you know, the month or whatever, if if you are gonna do the journey or not. Um, Some people like to just sit with initiation for a while because it's potent enough on its own. And then after initiation, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five months where we meet for a full day, one day a month. And in between those meetings is a study group that Aria will be leading. Um, or whoever the apprentice is. It may be a different apprentice when you um, take the journey. Um, So study group, halfway in between, that's another form of support. So it keeps you engaged in the work and connected with the group. 
And then in addition to that, you have a weekly check-in with an accountability partner where um, you get to choose somebody that you have a call with or you can meet in person with once a week um, where you share how your experience is going, what you're getting, what you're not getting. You might um, want to bitch and complain about how me and Aria are teaching or not. <laughs> not teaching that's all okay <laughs> I'm sure it happens um, <laughs> we hope that you would feel comfortable and confident enough to come to us and tell us anything at all because we ha we can hear it and we believe me we've heard it all and um, we're humans and so we're go you know we're doing our best to lead and guide you and we're learning at the same time uh, then after the five gatherings, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. And after the five gatherings, we then have our um, sixth gathering, which is here. It's actually the seventh because the first one is initiation weekend. Here in this sphere that I said we have to build a bridge going across um, from this sphere here up into what is called the upper supernals. We have to build a bridge in order to connect with unity consciousness. This is one of the most difficult things um, as humans because we're so dense in these bodies down on earth and the energies can feel so heavy. And these energies up here are so light and so infinite and so um, far away from us as we are down here on earth but we go through an entire process over the retreat weekend, which is, um, what is the word? It's spectacular in a way. Profound. Profound. <laughs> yeah, we come into as much as possible a state of unity consciousness within ourselves and together to fully remember that we are a part of everything and to feel ourselves connected to everything and to feel whole and complete within from head to toe every aspect of ourselves and then we get to bask in those energies the last two months while we're in the third eye and the crown and there is a presentation a project that we ask everyone to do and present to the group that is presented these last two months that demonstrate what you learned and how you've changed throughout the journey <sighs> yeah. So each of these spheres represents a different energy. And uh, the Kabbalah aspect is the teachings that we give, the headiness, the books that you read, um, the uh, more masculine, like structured aspect of what we provide. There's correspondences that co relate to both the chakra system and the sephira system the tree, on the tree of life, which are um, like crystals, animals, plants, archangels, master teachers, um, elemental beings, qualities, virtues, strengths and weaknesses. Aria? Are you going to add foods, something? colors, yeah. um, areas in the body, yeah, Aro uh, essential oils, aromas, yeah, notes, notes of everything, music. planets, everything that oh, applies to life applies on the tree. <laughs> it all fits, and um, each one has a different frequency, a different energy to it. And we invoke these things in order for you to palpably feel and experience the energies that are present in each of these spheres. So um, I'll give you some examples in just a moment, but I want to show you first these spheres, the sephira and the chakras are toroidal fields which many people don't realize, and I love sharing this information. So this is a toroidal field here, and this is how it moves. And this one is moving from bottom energy flowing up to top, and that is um, the same as the energy that 
we started with, with our grounding meditation. But that it also can move from top to bottom. So the energy can flow both directions, even simultaneously. And if you can just imagine that you are standing inside of this sphere, your feet are here, the energy coming up from those lines are what represent the roots of the tree of life. And your, the top of your head here, the crown, and these lines representing the branches of the tree of life that are reaching up and out. And this entire thing is what makes up your aura. All the layers, you have multiple layers of your aura. So let's just talk about the working aura that is just fingertip to fingertip with your arms stretched out in both directions. So this proportion is a little wrong because your arms aren't getting that wide compared to your body. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then let's see here. Each of the spheres that are in between the crown and the root face this direction here. So this is representative of your sacral chakra, your solar plexus chakra, your heart, your throat, and your third eye. Although the colors are going to be different, the numbers, number of petals are going to be different, and the speed that it's moving is going to be different according to each chakra. So this one's moving a little fast and has a lot of petals. Um, it's reminding me a lot of Sahaswara, the crown chakra. Um, yeah. So those are some examples of toroidal fields. There's many in our culture. So the flower of life, which I'm sure you're familiar with, is a toroidal field. It's, ener it's how energy moves. And these fields are magnetic, which means that they both attract and repel. So when your chakra system is turned on and activated and balanced and clear, your kundalini energy raises up and you'll learn a whole lot more about this in the journey or in ecstatic awakening meditation. Your kundalini energy rides the action of those toroidal fields, fields spinning and raises up through the sushumna, the central channel of your entire being, turns on and those chakras can call in what you want and send away what you don't want. And this is, I think, a big key to what we're doing because this gives you control over what's happening in your life, what you have in your life, and what you're releasing from yourself in your life. And there's so many layers to this, you know, you're not going to do it all at once. You're not going to be like, suddenly from, you know, ground zero, having a lot of um, issues and having to heal trauma or having challenges to overcome, you know, you're going to do it bit by bit. You're going to do it in a way that is manageable for you that is not going to overwhelm your system. Because if you try to do it really fast, you can actually fry your nervous system. And I've seen that as well. And I caution uh, greatly against people awakening their kundalini energy too fast. So that's another thing. We do this slow. We do it gently. We do it in your own time. You're doing it. No one's doing it to you or for you. So it's happening perfectly in the way that your higher self and your lower self both need. And then we have here, uh, you may have never seen this before. This is called the 231 gates of the Sefer Yetzirah. And it is a toroidal field. And this comes through uh, mystical Jewish tradition. This is just amazing. If you are to um, just meditate on any of these images, it will turn on wisdom inside you automatically just by staring at these things. And the Merkaba, of course, is another symbol um, for the toroidal field. And this um, symbol in particular, they, they all represent different things. So this one in particular represents um, the as above, so below, 
you may have heard that saying before. It's the masculine and feminine, masculine and feminine energies. It is also representative of the four elements, which I'm sure you've, you've seen the elemental symbols as, uh, you know, the triangles or triangle with a line through it, upward or downward facing. This is all coming from the Merkaba. So many rabbit holes we can go down. And I'm sure that at some point, um, depending upon which uh, things that are appealing to you that you discover on the journey, you're going to learn things that we don't even know and that we're gonna be really excited to hear from you. And um, you're gonna have questions that we're gonna say, I got no idea about that. Go research it and bring us back the answers because <laughs> we have not discussed, we have not gone down that rabbit hole yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the fun thing is you can study these tools for your entire life and never learn everything that there is to know about them. So it makes it always fresh and always interesting. So yeah, Merkaba, I'll show you these images again just because they're so beautiful. 231 gates of the Sefer Yetzirah, flower of life. This is how they move, your chakras move. You have smaller chakras in all of the moving joints in your body. You have them above, you have them below. And then the tree of life. Each of these spheres is one of those spinning toroidal fields that we're going to discover. And each one represents a different energy. So let's get to that. Um, let's see here. Let's go right here to, let's go to, to Gabra and Hesed. These are, um, this is one of the most challenging places for, for students that we've noticed over the years. Um, maybe it's because we're on the West Coast and we have um, some a lot to heal in our throat chakra around communication. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, maybe it's it's difficult for other people as well. So throat chakra, this red one is called Gebra, and it sits on the feminine pillar. And this blue one is called. Um, Hesed, which sits on the masculine pillar, this white pillar. And these energies are of compassion or mercy and severity, severing, cutting away. So these energies of severity and mercy have to be in balance in order for the throat chakra to be in balance. If you have too much mercy and you're too sweet and too nice, I'm sure many of us have experienced this, you start feeling like a doormat and you become resentful and you feel like a martyr and you're not taking good care of yourself and you're giving your energies away too much. Um, this can lead to severe imbalance of Gebra, of severity, because there's a point where you're going to explode like a volcano with all of these energies building up and building up and your resentment and your um, not having your needs met building up to the point where at some point, ah, and you're going to burn a bunch of bridges, right? Eventually, or you're just going to feel like smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you have no voice, no opinion, nothing more to give. That's the imbalance of too much mercy, too much compassion. It's like also like um, an overgrown jungle that has never been pruned and everything's choked out and you can't harvest any fruits there because everything's so choked out, you can't even get to it anymore, right? And you just have this massive overgrowth. Then on the other side here, Gebera, if you have too much severity, too much harshness, too sharp of an edge, 
too willing to cut away, to burn bridges, to sever connections, to let things go um, that have been a part of your life, you can end up feeling very lonely, disconnected. Um, it might be hard to make things happen and to grow things in your life. People will not rely on you or trust you very easily. You might be seen as uh, or felt as harsh and prickly and be really hard for people to connect with your heart and for you to connect with your heart. And this is, connect this is the energy of the tongue that is the sword that is like cutting and mean and vindictive. And, you know, often this is a protection me mechanism, trying to protect the heart from being broken. Too much severity. But in balance, you're willing to speak the truth with courage and with love in such a way that you're cutting away what is not serving, but growing trust, growing love and connection. And that that cutting away, that pruning is actually creating more fruit to grow and the ability to have more access to that fruit because you're doing it in such a way that it is encouraging growth. So that's the balance of Geber and Hesed. And that's just one example. And so with these energies, we'll take you through a process that helps reveal where your strengths and weaknesses are and gives you specific energies to work with throughout the month to find balance with these things, practices that you can do in your everyday life so that you are balancing these energies in a very practical way that is very accessible, if that makes sense. Do you have anything to add, Aria? No, oh, that was beautiful. The, the, the weaving of the two and the balance um, with, like, I love the example of the overgrowth here mm. in uh, Hesed, like the jungle that's just like out of control and you need to take your, you know, machete of severity yeah. and get involved so that there can actually be, you know, some, some, positive growth for yourself and for the area around you as well and <clears throat> and then in um in awakening each of these areas of the body there will be different things that come up and that's okay that's that's why we do this as a slow gentle journey as kriana said so that we that so that your system doesn't get overloaded because the truth is a matching grant it's like you only get what you're ready to receive. Mm. So um, there will be indications when you've, when you've got, you know, when it's to the appropriate level for you, when you've reached something that's ready to be released or you've reached something that's ready to be um, brought into your system. You're willing now, your heart's open. You, these, and they're all connected. That was the other thing I wanted to say is how, how, how connected each of these areas are not just from oh, left to right, mm -hmm. yes, but from top to bottom and how they all speak with one another. And as, as, as each becomes activated, it will, the healing of any of these will help with the healing with the rest of them is what I'm trying to say is you can't touch one without touching the rest. Yes. So, um, yeah, slow and gentle and easy. I know like in our society, we want it now. Um, but be yeah. gentle with yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, that's true. But also, you know, let's be honest. There's moments when people get pushed to their edge of what they can, like, it's like, okay, I'm at my edge of what I can handle right now. And um, that's important also. It's an important part of the experience to um, have that stuff comes up that isn't easy and to mm -hmm. move through it. And through doing that, 
like I was saying earlier, there is a great reward that we experience for showing up for those moments. Um, interestingly, as we're talking about this, I wanted to mention the tarot cards, um, the 22 major cards of the arcana of tarot are uh, represented on these paths in between the spheres. And the path that is here in between Gabra and Hesed is strength. And the strength card is here. Let me just um, look it up really quick and show you uh, what that looks like because it's this woman and she's got her hands around the mouth of this lion which is sometimes a dangerous place to put your fingers right but she completely trusts him she knows that look at him he's like in service to her look at his posture he's just like in love with her completely in service to her this is gebra and this is hesed the lion is Gebra, severity. He's got those teeth and he is a predator and he can protect her if needed. But he's just like completely in service to this beautiful, loving, merciful goddess who interestingly also has the Lemnus gate above her head, which is uh, the figure, what is it, infinity loop? Also known as the infinity loop, Lemnus gate, which is a splice of the toroidal field. So she's wearing her crown connected to divine wisdom. She's got her crown on. She's got this toroidal field activated above her head. She's connected to divine wisdom, which is guiding her. And she'll know exactly when to use the strength of this lion to cut away um, anything that needs to be cut away. Just thought I'd share that little bit there. This is a pretty cool little little tie-in and the, these happen throughout the entire journey. All right. Oh, let's just take a breath, take in what you've heard. So this journey can be for, it's, it's meant for many different kinds of people. If you have past trauma that you're dealing with, it can help you heal that trauma. If you have places in your life where you just are plateaued and you can't seem to progress or ex have a new experience like you'd want to, this journey can help you with that. It's wonderful for uh, teachers and parents, people who are responsible for children, because when you learn these practices um, and processes, you can support children because, oh my goodness, they are so much easier to share this information with than adults. <laughs> they're, they're open and they're connected to source, so they get it much more quickly than we do. It's, um, it's wonderful for people who have careers. It can help you um, if you're in a career or have a job that is undesirable, you can tune deeper into who you are and what your purpose is so that you can move more towards the direction of what you really wanna be doing in your life. Or it can help turn you on in the job that you have already so that you're even better at what you're doing now. It's, it's meant for humans. And if there was a manual that was how to be human, I think that these teachings would definitely be it. Um, I feel that everyone should know these processes. And I think that these teachings are taught in lots of different lineages. This is one way of experiencing and understanding them. And if it appeals to you and works for you, uh, wonderful. And if not, then that's okay too, because all rivers lead to the ocean, <laughs> so to speak. <sighs> all right. So um, just wrapping up what we're doing here. Um, thank you. I just got served a beautiful dinner. <laughs> Wrapping up here will be complete in just a few more minutes. 
Um, some of the techniques that we use are a part of our Ecstatic Awakening program, and these are amazing. Also, everyone we believe should know these. They're um, basic, like how to be in a body type practices. So anything that's coming up in you that feels maybe um, skeptical or maybe we brought up something that's like, wow, that's maybe we touched on something that is a challenge for you. Just notice where that is in your body and take your fingers, tap on it and take some deep breaths while you're tapping on it. Ah, and make some noise and let that tension go. Ah, ah. You can move your body in any way that feels good. You can slap, you can shake. Ah. Ah. And release. And ah. share that little piece. Keep going as long as you feel you need to. Um, this I do on a regular basis whenever something feels stagnant or stuck or built up within me to release and move energy. And I highly recommend that everyone do this. Ah, all right. So registering for this journey, there are early registration discounts, which for the next journey that is about to begin are still applicable. So please contact us, um, Kriana or Aria through Torin Collective, and you can find Torin Collective on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube, on Meetup, on Instagram, and um, is that is that it? We're everywhere. Just look up Torrent Collective. We have a web. We are. We're all over the place. Yeah, and we have a um, personal web page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send us a message, and uh, we will answer any questions that you have. Please write us if you have any questions. Um, yeah, and we're really looking forward to being on this journey with you all. And it's half full right now, but so we still have some room. And yeah, thank you so much for listening and joining us today. And I wish you all the blessings, so many blessings on your journey, whatever that looks like, whatever the unfolding is. We are on the same team doing it all together. And we'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.